Hi, everybody, and welcome to Connect In. Connect In is a weekly broadcast, or more, a weekly conversation about different ways that it helps us to live a heart centered life when we get out of our head and back into our heart. Or sometimes, as I like to call it, to get out of our twirly head syndrome and back into what's essential, our heart. So thanks for spending some time and watching um, this conversation. And I would love to encourage you to um, write comments or questions and just participate in the conversation, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching this at some other time. That's the beauty of technology, right? So over this uh, this past couple weeks, there's been a lot of conversation in the news uh, around following your heart. And I'm speaking specifically about uh, Simone Bronze, but it seems like it's creating a thread all across um, the web, in personal circles, all of that. And I just wanted to take a few minutes and one is acknowledge the amazing courage that it took for her to say what was right or not right with her, right? Because you know, I'm sure you know that her head must have been whirling and twirling with if I do this, what if, what's going to happen? How are people going to think, feel, see me? You know, am I going to get hate mail? Am I going to get love mail? You know, there's a lot of things that happened uh, before she even made the announcement. And it was a big one. And that's Simone's life. But the truth is, is every day, you and I go through big moments of needing to follow our heart, which is what Simone did, right, instead of our head. So one is I just want to acknowledge Simone and every other athlete and um, influencer that has come out in, in support of her and not in support. You know, because we all have to follow what is right for us and speak our heart and our truth. But just take a moment and feel into maybe today or maybe in the past month, a time where you really need it to make a decision and the decision you made or we're thinking of making, was not the most uh, popular choice. But in your being, you felt that truth. Yeah. I call that your heart's yes, right? There is the mind decisions and the heart decisions. And when we are living a heart-centered life, believe it or not, our heart and our mind are aligned. So we can make decisions that are right, right for now and right for our next step, our next evolution or our next transformation. So we do this in our day to day. We do this often at work. We do this with really big decisions and we do it with tiny decisions. What just popped into my mind was you know, sometimes you're getting ready and you have to go to work, to meet a friend, um, to uh, go on a date, right? And you're looking at something to wear and you really love whatever you want to wear. Shoes, pants, socks, t-shirt, dress shirt. But your head starts saying, well... Are you sure that's the right thing to wear? You know, you are going to blah, blah, blah. And somebody's going to judge you and blah, blah, blah. And then how many times do you make the decision of what to wear 
on what you think other people's expectations are, right? That is a conversation of the mind. Versus when the pressure is off and you want to wear what you want to wear, it's like chances are, whether you're conscious or not, you're following your heart. And it's these little, little, little moments of following your heart's truth, following what your how and what your body is leading you to do that prepares you for those bigger moments like the Simone Bronze moments those big moments where you're like you know I think this is no longer working for me right and you make the choice and then the consequential decisions of how to go forward from there and this is big, right? We make them when we choose who we want to hang out with. We make them when we try to do big um, transformational jumps for ourselves, um, which could be a new job, going to school, um, ending relationships, beginning relationships, all those kind of things. We are truly intuitive beings right we are beings of instinct and that instinct is what runs through our body we have learned to cultivate our instinct and some of us call that intuition now we're all mammals and we all have instinct and intuition um, whether it's whether you are regardless of what gender you are we all have a really strong sense of intuition and instinct. And in a way, that kind of leads us. But what kind of gets trained out of us is this idea of aligning our head and our heart to live a heart-centered life, right? And somehow we've polarized, yeah, like the whole world has polarized into black and white these days you know, courage or failure, whatever those things are, right? But when we make a decision that's right for our heart, right? And that, or we make a decision that's in our head, both of those have consequences. The ones in our head are often safer, make sense, um, are practical. Uh, most importantly, they're safer. They don't kind of rock the boat so much. The ones from our heart are truly choices that are for our evolution, for our personal self-growth, for you and you only. So take a moment again and just think about when you've had to make a choice, right? And you had um, your family, right? You've had your family and all the lists and responsibilities that you had to make for your family, right? And then there's the list and responsibilities for you. And which one gets the attention? Chances are your family. And, you know, we say things, well, it's okay. It's really okay. I am sacrificing myself and my dreams for my family. And you know, and that is, that takes courage, right? But don't lose sight of you. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater to live a heart-centered life. The first thing you need to do is just start connecting in, following your intuition following where your heart and body are leading you and take heed like think about it consider it feel into it and then bring your head along unite you know, your head and your heart and then make a choice it takes courage to want to grow it takes courage to want to change and in the past two years, my goodness, have we had 
a whole bunch of change. And so much change that it almost feels like quicksand. It almost feels like the ground under us isn't known anymore. And so we have to navigate in a state of heart, mind, centered places. Right? It's the only way we can take the next step. So again, just take a moment and feel into your body and think about a decision that you made. You know, something, let's shift that a little. Think about a dream, a desire, something that has been sitting in the background, wanting to be part of your life, playing music, learning a new skill, learning how to ride a bike, I know, going camping, doing something that you haven't done. They all take courage. And when you make these steps from an aligned heart and head, they are easy. The, the logistics of that become easy. Things flow. When you are living a life where you are only operating in your head, it truly does feel like you're pushing a boulder up a hill. So think about your life right now, this week. You know, where has there been ease? And where has there been um, kind of um, restriction? Right? Just feel into it. Now think about that, that one piece with ease and just soften your eyes for a moment and just feel what that feels like in your body. I believe our body holds the roadmap for our transformation. And it guides us by feelings and sensations and emotions. So feel into that moment where you feel like you had flow, you had joy, life, excitement. Feel what that feels like in your body. Now think about those moments in this day or last week where you really just felt like you were pushing a boulder up a hill all the time. There is dread. There is non-excitement. You're like, oh my God, I have to do this again. But this is what I have to do to make a living so I can have a house and I can have food. Right? There is a truth in all of that. But I'm actually saying when you align your head and your heart, you can do that and you can have joy and happiness or deep happiness, which is a sense of contentment for wherever you are in this moment, right? We are all works in process, <laughs> progress. We are all works in progress. None of us are perfect. And the best way to navigate life is these one little steps at a time. So take a moment again and just think of those moments where you have felt courage, courageous. There's a quality where, which I call bravado. It's like, yes, I can do it. Yes, I can do this. That is not heart-centered guidance. That is your mind going, push that boulder uphill. Push that boulder up the hill. Right? Because you gotta. Because people think it's fun or you gotta or whatever that is, right? But when you align your heart, when you are in you are aligned in your heart and your body, there is not that bravado. There is that like, yes, I can do that. The heart math people which is a, a particular research company, talk about the energy of our heart extending 15 feet in front of us. And I love this because what it makes me think about 
is that when you are being guided by your heart, right, when you are totally engaging your heart energy, there is 15 feet of this beautiful, allowing, flowing energy happening in front of you. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, I was with a friend and um, we were having a really wonderful morning. We, you know, we walked on the beach and we're hanging around and there was just flow. Everything was flowing. We were meeting people. And then I got a parking ticket, which I wasn't really upset about. But somebody else had parked right behind me and started going, I can't believe you got a parking ticket. You should, you should keep your car here all day. You shouldn't pay that ticket, blah, 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 you know, whatever that was. But what it did energetically is both me and my friend, you know, kind of shut us down, right? And I could tell you that from that point on, like we were struggling, like we couldn't find a parking spot. Um, we went to a restaurant and they yelled us for sitting down at a table. Like there was all this lack of flow that happened. And it's because I, we <laughs> stopped coming and living life through our heart. So the invitation this week is to have courage, to see if you can connect in to your heart space and then let your heart your your logistics your mind kind of work together because when you allow your heart and mind to work together you are living a heart-centered life there is flow there is ease and you can make courageous steps over and over and over again and you know the truth is is when you make choices from your heart Often everybody around you is going to support you in that process because you're not being the, this is what I could do. You're being, this is what I can do. And all of this is what I call reclaiming your heart's yes. And if you'd like to learn more ways about reclaiming your heart's yes, please go over to my website, DaminiCelebri.com. I also would love to hear any thoughts and feelings or ahas that you have after watching this and go ahead and share that in the, the comments below. We are all works in process and each moment we make a choice to live in fear or in love. Love is living a heart-centered life. And it's a life where there's ease and flow that's beautiful and unique for you. May not be for everybody, but it's for you. So thanks for watching. I would love again to hear your thoughts and ahas or ways that you recognize how you are living your heart's yes, how you are being guided by your heart's yes. So I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.